Hey guys, so we're going to continue the modular series. In this one, we're going to actually create some things in Blender and then send them over to Unity and uh, work with them in Unity as we're creating them in Blender. Uh, so this should be a lot of fun. This isn't a beginner tutorial. It is part of the modular series, so if you haven't watched any of the other videos, uh, watch those, come back to this if you feel a little bit lost or confused about anything. But first up, we need to create a project in Unity. So new project, we're going to use a third person template here. And we're just going to call this whatever you want. Uh, I'm just going to call it tutorial for now. And uh, create the project. Okay, so it's going to take a little while to do that. We're going to head to Blender. First things first, make sure Absolute Grid Snap is on. And um, I'm going to make this. I'm going to S Shift Z. Go into edit mode with it. S Shift Z. Get two. Go ahead and drag these faces around real quick. I want to create a floor uh, tile real quick. And just to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to go ahead and add some loop cuts. The inset, hit I, hit I again, then hold control and bring it up a little bit. So I got 10 centimeter thick floors. Okay, just keep that in mind. That means we got to push all of our door frames up 10 centimeters if we're going to do that. Uh, but this is a pretty standard kind of setup here, right? So four meter by four meter. I'm just going to call this 401A. Okay, let's do a cube. Go ahead and set this one up real quick. Okay, and we can bring it up. Do four meters. Now you can use three meters, and we're going to also do um, ten centimeters out this way. Uh, but you can use uh, three meters, but they're going to become kind of cramped environments. So it's good if you need to like induce the fear of like claustrophobia in the player or whatever. But um, generally, four works out a lot better. Sometimes five even. You'll mix and batch uh, numbers around as well. So you might use four on one section and then use five on another. You just have to find a way to transition between the different pieces by using other modular pieces, right? So um, we have this set up. We have like a wall. Uh, the main thing here is I'm going to Alt D. I'm Alt D in instead of Control uh, Shift D in so I can create an instance. Okay. So it creates a linked duplicate when you hit Alt D and do that. Um, and I can do that again over here as well. Um, the reason why I want to show you this is because I had some loop cuts in like this. Actually, let's do two here. And let's do one here. And I'm just going to grab all of this. I'm going to inset it. It's like the floor. I'm going to hit control. I'm going to bring it out a little bit like that. Okay, so we can see what's going on with this now. Okay, and so here's the thing. I need to create a door frame for one of these maybe. Okay, create a cube. And this cube, we want be maybe like 1.3 or 1.4 meters wide. Okay, and uh, on top of that, we want to have the height at a certain value here. Things are going to stutter a little bit while, I, while Unity is doing its thing. But I want it to go to, you can see this is the 2 meter mark. I want it to be 2.4 meters in this case because I have to raise it up. I want 2.3 meters, but the floor is uh, 10 centimeters thick, so i got to go to 2.4. That's what's going on there. Now, this isn't like one-size-fits-all solution. You can make your doors whatever size you need, but you need to pick kind of like a standard size for a single door, double doors, um, or even larger, or whatever the case. So, uh, But I can actually Boolean this from this, like that. So I'm going to do, uh, if you have bull tools, you're using bull tools, do a brush Boolean difference non-destructive um, and the reason why is because well if we modify this one including uv mapping you can see it propagates through all these so we can also do corner units like this non-destructively so what we're going to find is that if you have this add-on modifier list add-on it's really useful um, but normally you would want to create uh, you want to put select this object shift s cursor to selected right and what you'll do is you'll cre create an empty shift a create plane axis empty that's normally what you're going to do. All right, then you'll add a mirror modifier. And you will pick the empty, okay? Like that. That's what you're going to do. Now, I'm not doing it this way. Instead, I use a modifier list add-on where you just add a mirror modifier. I can click the little button, and it creates it there automatically. And it's already linked it up. All right, so the main thing here, though, is that what I actually want to do, I need more faces. So I'm going to actually click Array. Okay. I'm going to put that above the mirror. And I want to array this out one time in this direction on Y, negative 1. Okay. 
So what's going to happen here is if I rotate this empty, you can see it rotates like so. Um, that's kind of what's going on there. And also, um, I feel like something, the mirror is doing the wrong thing. Let's turn it off a second. What I want to do is put this empty at the four meter mark for this, uh, this wall. All right, so you can see there it is. And I can rotate it now here. Um, probably 45 degrees, I think, is what we got to do. So we'll do 45. And grab the object again. We're going to bisect. Or we're going to do Y, bisect. And you can see uh, it sets it up like so. All right, now it's not a perfect result. But it's a quick, easy, non-destructive way of creating a really simple corner unit real quick. And so our corner unit is actually the size of the wall. And um, it does this number. If you wanted something a little bit different, uh, we can instance out another section. For example, um, we can add the mirror to it, create another empty for it. We can place this halfway, right? And rotate it 45 degrees. Now we can do the same setup, but bisected on Y. So we can make a smaller unit as well. And they're both non-destructive, so they update, which is really good. It's actually a pretty good way to work it. So we got a floor, we got that. Let's do a ceiling section. We're gonna get into Unity here in a second, but the ceiling section, surprisingly, um, I want it to go down instead of up. And I also want it to be 40 centimeters thick. So that'll give us 50 centimeters between the two. Okay. And I can place it up if I need to. Let's get the, uh, if you move an object or edit mode, it doesn't change the uh, pivot point, right? So I want to scale this S shift Z hit two. Okay. S shift Z hit two. We scaled it. It's, you can see it became kind of misaligned for some reason. I don't know why I did that, but let's do, let's fix that. So there we go, we have that set up. We need to apply the rotation and the scale. And most importantly, we want them facing, they're actually facing the wrong direction right now. We want them facing down negative Y. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate all of these locally. R, Z, and hold control while doing this. And we're gonna go negative 90, okay? This might have messed things up quite a bit. Actually, it should have did individuals as well. I guess it really doesn't matter. We could we could do global, um, use an active element. So in this case, let's use um, this one, RZ and hold control. We do negative 90. When I'm facing down negative Y, all their rotational values will have changed. So you have to apply rotation and scale to all of it real quick. You can see some of these things don't like it because guess what? Instances don't like this usually. Kind of weird, but it's true. So apply rotation and scale here. It's going to break the instances. And we can actually just um, go back through, apply rotation and scale on all of these, right? All the ones we created there. Um, so when we grab these ones, and we grab this one last, we can hit Control L, link object data. That will re-instance it, and it just so happens they're all zeroed out in ones now. Uh, it's a little bit weird to, to deal with that one, but. Also, I don't know if this one broke, I guess. Oh, the array is going the wrong direction now. So the array doesn't update. We have to put it at one, I think. Something like that. Let's turn off the uh, the mirror real quick and just see what's going on with the array. It's the wrong direction. So one here, negative one here. We turn the array back on, or the mirror back on. That'll work out right there. So we got... Uh, ceiling section now, cool. Let's do. Let's just do a big piece under here like this for now. Inset, hold control, push it up, and let's go back through these and make sure they're all set up great. Okay. You see this one's rotated. Apply rotation scale. That's why you check things, right? Simple enough. We have walls. We have ceiling. We have floor. That's a basic modular kit. That's as simple as they come. I kid you not. We have two different corner units too, uh, which is nice. But we need to name these things. So we got uh, wall 01A, right? And what I like to do is just keep going with that name usually as long as I can. And we'll say uh, like single door maybe. Single door. And 
wall O and A corner large. Wall O and A corner small. Notice I didn't do a, a concave corner. I only did convex corners. That means they poke, they're out like, um, they're like this, right? So if you take this wall unit at some point, put it on the grid somewhere. Uh, what happens is when you need a bend in this, it, you see it still works, right? To make that bend. So we don't really need to do that one like that. Unless we needed a smaller one, we might have to uh, model one out. So this here is going to be floor or ceiling, excuse me, one A, and this is going to be floor one A, which is already tech. Cool. Let's go to Unity. Unity is loaded up. We're going to do a new scene. We're not going to use this scene here. Do a new scene real quick. Create it. Um, in this scene, I want to do a couple things to get it configured and working real quick. Um, we're going to just create a game object, 3D object, and we're going to do a plane. And I'm just going to scale this up real quick, just so I have something to kind of reference where I can, we'll, we'll delete it again later. But I want to go to prefabs. I want to drag this character out, hit W, move him up. So that way he's sitting mostly on the ground here. Hit F to focus like that. Right. Now you'll notice there's a big UI element that was hiding in the sky. <laughs> it's way up there. Um, that UI element, when we press play, you'll see is that it gives you this um, these mobile controls, okay? Also, it's not working right. We need to get rid of the main camera we had. We'll just delete that one. And this character has the uh, player controller has the uh, new camera for it. So that's good. Uh, that UI, I don't really want to see it. That's this guy here. Just select it, and you can uncheck it over here. Now, or the uh, inspector, and get rid of it. And so when we hit play now, we won't have that UI element no more. Right? Cool. Pretty easy to do, right? And so we're set up and configured for the most part. Let's export these out. We're going to copy. So copy the name here. We say we got single door. We're going to file, export. Um, I'm going to use a add-on. There's a link on my website. It's in um, the description. You go to the resources section. You can get uh, this Unity FBX exporter. And so it's a file export Unity FBX. It does a bunch of stuff under the hood, like rotates the characters and the props and everything. So it exports uh, an FBX file that imports into Unity really well. Um, and so we can do that. We're going to use only the selected object. I go to models. Oops, excuse me. We're going to go to our projects folder. Unity in this case. Um, tutorial. Assets. I'm going to create a folder in here. I'm going to call it models, okay? And then here, we can go ahead and paste the name that we have. So this is a one ad single door there. That's it. So this goes really fast. You just copy these. And if you put that export on quick favorites, you can go ahead and knock these things out super fast. This first export is actually the slowest because what's going to happen is as you get all the names right, it's real easy by the way to accidentally re replace the wrong thing don't do that but um, once you get these initially exported you don't have to type this in again anymore as long as you got good naming convention right like you know for sure you're going to use these names you can always just go in and do this also save your scene somewhere i usually give it um, the kit name and then i will say uh, this is like a master file this is where i'm creating everything so i say master and then like oh one that's usually how I go about doing these things. A lot of times I'll prefix things here with the kit name as well. So instead of it just being wall, it'll be like whatever I'm creating, dungeon or this or that, dungeon kit. You can do things like that. So, or the map name even, or like the subcomponent of the map, or you can do map name and the sub kit name. And then you see what I'm saying? It just goes on and on. So when we go back to Unity, it all imports into the models folder. Okay, and um, so we can drag and drop these things out now. We don't need necessarily that. So we can, um, let's prep these a little bit though. You see these are different colors. Some had materials, some didn't. Most of them didn't, this one did. We go to materials and we're gonna set to none and apply. Uh, these other ones, it still tries to import them but there was no materials on so it doesn't do nothing. Uh, so we have to just run through these if we want and we can remove the materials. 
This is what I personally do. Some people try to import it with the material. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I like to do this number. Also, they won't have collision. So we go to model. We can select all these shift select, right? Um, and generate colliders. Apply. That'll update all of them. Okay. So now we have Floro 1A. And you'll see that when we bring it out, it doesn't snap to the grid. So what we need to do here is, first of all, make sure we're using pivot. We're using global. Uh, we can turn this on if we want to see the grid, right? But here's the main ones. Uh, you're going to align this to all axes, and that'll put it on the grid. You're going to use this quite a bit. Um, also, you want to turn snapping on, right? So you also want to change here. You see it scales at 1, and it's set to 0.25. So the move values are going to move um, if potentially by 0.25. I'll show you why that doesn't matter here in a sec. But... Um, it does matter if you want to move at 10 centimeters. So 0.1 is 10 centimeter, right? So we got scale one. Don't change that. Uh, it's the overall scale. So now when I grab an object, if I hit control D and I um, duplicate it, you can see we can move it around real quick, which is great. We can start moving this thing around. It snaps to the grid, but it doesn't move 10 centimeters. You have to hold control and it will now move at those smaller increments of 10 centimeters. Otherwise it would have moved at point two five or whatever. You get the idea, right? Uh, so we can lay out these little sections like this super fast, which is fun. Really cool. We can also turn them into prefabs. So you can see we have the four elements here. Let's create an empty object. Okay, and we're going to call this floor uh, large, floor section large. Why not? Okay. So that's an empty. Now this empty, I want it to behave like my uh, my floor tiles here. Oh, actually, my floor tiles. Look at this. You see the uh, pivot points at the center. This one's in the center still. I forgot to fix that one. I saw it and I didn't I didn't fix it. But I'm gonna use machine tools to make the pivot point right here at the corner on this vertex. Shift S with machine tools, and I'm gonna put it over there and hit Alt while doing it. Hold Alt while clicking that. And it should not adjust your rotational values, and your scale should still be the same. So we can now export this floor 01A again. Bam. And that's updated in Unity. You'll see um, it should already be in here. And the pivot points have just changed. It actually changed position a little bit, I think. Like these all shifted over a little bit. So it's not real apparent, but if your pivot points are off and you start level, you create start creating a level, a whole scene, whole environment and you have to shift the pivot point later, you're in trouble. So get those things right. That's like a, a hard stop there. You need to make sure everything's right before you start building out. Okay. We wanted to turn these into a prefab. And we had that empty we created, and we named it floor section large A. Now, we can actually snap this thing to a vertex. So we can do the same thing. So we press V. You see the icon change. Click, drag, and we can snap down here. Okay. The rotational value shouldn't have changed, I don't think. Nope. And so um, these all had pivot points in the corners, but now we have floor section large A in one of the corners. So if we take all of these elements, and we take all these game objects, should I say, toss them into floor section large, okay, you'll see this number occur. This is the main, these are the, okay. Cool. So what's happening here is usually you have a prefabs folder. In this case, the character's in here. We're still going to use it, but... That's probably not exactly where you want your character prefab, just saying. So the thing is, is that um, we have this setup. We can drag this in, and it will create a prefab, right? So we have a larger a larger floor section. If you double-click, you can actually select the individual components still. So be careful of that. You need to select the blue one. Um, but we dragged it in. It's like this. Now, when we place this thing out into the world, you'll see it's actually placing where that... Um, point is. Uh, but just for a little bit of cleanup purposes, we're going to double click this. That's going to take us into the prefab. All right. I'm going to select the main piece up here, not the components or the like, game objects, should I say? You can see it's at negative four, zero, 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 whatever. I like to zero these back out and it might mess it up in the game world. Um, but I'm going to zero it back out. Hit backspace here or that little back arrow. You can see it shifted the position of this thing. And, um, that's going to happen if you do it this way. So otherwise, you could try doing like a right-click. Um, you can right-click create prefab, 
and there you'll have prefab like this, right? So you can you can go into that and then start laying out your components, your uh, potentially your models, right? I can you start doing that number, and then get out of that, you'll have that prefab now set up. So that could be really useful to you, perhaps. Uh, in this new prefab, we're just going to delete it. We don't need it. All right, so we have prefabs now. And this needs to go back to the grid. So all axes, make sure it's on the grid. Let's put it under our character. You can see it's snapping to one meter units. And that's what we want. So we can always drag out new ones and then just quickly position them. And um, just do all, all axes. You could do that. Or you can grab one and you can uh, just hit Control D and do that number. All right. So pretty easy little setup there for that floor. Much bigger tiles. We don't have so many little units running around. Now, this can cause performance issues potentially. Um, having more objects, obviously. So sometimes it might be worth modeling a big section like this. Okay, and making that its own kit piece. Just keep that in mind. We're not at the point of optimizing anything, obviously, because we're just getting started. But build it first, see what you need, and um, kind of call out what you don't. As you build out your whole scene or your environment, you'll start to realize where your performance hiccups will be. So check your performance as you're working on a level or a set dress. But for the initial initial block in, anyways, like the initial setup gray box type deal or white box even. Just have fun, right? And create. Get as many things created as you need. Um, you can always kind of collapse them down later on and reconfigure things. And it's a it's kind of got to do it as you go along. It helps a lot instead of just um, thinking you'll get everything right from the start or you'll never get started that way. So we have the floor. That's great. What about the rest of this stuff? Well, we have these um, these walls, right? And so I'm just going to drag a bunch of stuff out real quick and get them onto the grid. And we got that one wall. We got this wall. So these are the walls I've shown in the whole modular series. They're just not cold. They're solid. That's the only difference. So I didn't cold the backside. I didn't cold the sides at all. So they're just solid pieces right now. The reason I showed this this way is because it's just like every other kit you've seen. If I hit Control D. And uh, when you rotate, hold control first. So control D, hold control, then rotate. Otherwise, you'll get ro weird rotational values. This is the exact same setup as most modular kits you've seen on marketplaces, right? You can literally uh, go through this pretty quick and get to rotate, right? There you go. And set up two sides to a wall. So maybe one side's an exterior, one side's an interior. Well, you would have to change the interior, obviously, right? can't do that if it's all one solid object necessarily, right? So you can mix and match your little wall units together. As long as they're following the same kind of proportions here, four meter walls, you can make multiple walls if needed or variations of the walls even. Um, so that works out quite well. And you can combine these things together as a prefab technically, but it would be better maybe to build, um, I don't know. It, it, you can you might be better off just building a solid piece like this, a single unit like this, and then having the split version as well, just in case you need it. But a lot of people like to double those things up like that. So, um, anyways, we got that kind of worked out there. And what else do we actually need? I want to build a column real quick. I don't have a column yet. Those are just nice ways to break up the uh, monotony of the uh, the kit, right? So I'm going to make this a one meter cube. Make a column real quick that goes all the way up to right there. Okay, and we're just going to give it the name column 01A. This is one of the few objects, in my opinion, that you're probably going to want a center alignment. And this is a potential, anyways. But the problem here is that if you're light map baking and this is all one light map, <laughs> you'll see what happens there. It's going to have some issues. So you, sometimes you need to split it and UV map each side independently, or sometimes you can cull the whole backside. You might not need it, right? You do things like that. Um, you can just make a half of a wall or half of a column, right? Uh, for this, for this demo, anyways, I guess I'll just split it. Uh, column 01A. We can copy it. Apply rotation and scale. 
We're going to go ahead and um, we're going to take this, export it, give it the name, make sure select the objects is on, boom. And you'll see now this goes into the game engine, right? Very quick. You can do that. Set it to all axes. Once you do that and you hit Control D, you're good to go. You don't have to do anything else really. So we can place these wherever we need them now. A little hard to see here without ambient occlusion, but we'll be all right for now. So if we wanted one every four meters on every panel, we could do that. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so what about stairs? A lot of you guys get really confused with the stairs part. This is the easiest way to visualize what happens with your stairs. So if I create a cube real quick, I start um, maybe even below the floor a little bit, but usually you start at the floor level. Um, you could do maybe like a little loop cut and then pull that down, something like that even, just so it's straight up and down right there. Uh, but what you'll do is more than likely, uh, you got to figure out, A, how, f let's take this one out actually. We'll take this one out this way. A little hard to see, guys. I'm sorry, but we need to line these things up just right. Oh, you know what? That's uh, <laughs> That needs to go up anyways. So this whole loop here, pull it up one. This whole section, this bottom face, pull it up one. This stair will probably run to the next floor, which will be up here, right? But it needs to go up 0.1 now to match up with our floors, potentially. So we'll go up point one. This comes back down to where it was, right? That's a ramp, right? I think most of us are aware of the idea of ramps. Pretty simple in nature. We need to just line it up so that the corner is over there, perhaps. And pull this one out a little bit. So determine how big of a ramp you need, first of all. Um, that can be quite useful. You can use off numbers too, but you have to make, you got to line it back up to the grid some, somehow, some way. And so think about the slope of this ramp though. Like, do you really want your characters going up a very steep slope? Like, is it an office space or something? Then don't make a steep slope. That's all you got to do. Also, you can potentially slice this thing in half. I'm going to AM merge by distance real quick. That should be the halfway point. Okay, so we press KCA now to cut it down the middle. Um, your stairs can also do things, you know, like have bends in them and stuff like that. So you could think of this as its own piece. I'm going to press Y, that rips it, or it um, splits it. So it's its own thing now. And if I grab this vertex, I'm going to set to active element. I'm going to hit R and Z and hold control. This is starting to look familiar a little bit. So pretty much what you're going for here is you're going to work out this section like this. Uh, you probably want it to hit a wall, generally speaking. So if you're very careful, look at the floor textures here, or the floor tiling. All right. Uh, we have, well, that's a ceiling tile, but let's use the ceiling tile. It's the same size. Like say we had another one out here. You see they line up. That's usually a good idea, just generally speaking. Not required necessarily, but it's a good idea. We'll delete all this stuff back here. I don't know what it's doing or why. Doing it the way it's doing it. I think it's because I had those extra edges in here. I don't really necessarily need them. So I'm going to control X and dissolve them. And now I can go back through and pull that down again. You see it pulls down to the grid. This is not on the grid apparently. So I'm going to pull that down to the grid. Uh, this you would be tempted to put it exactly halfway, but it's going to be a floor as well. So you're going to pull it up to um, 10 centimeter. Right. And then this section down here. It's causing all kinds of problems. First of all, let's, um, let's merge those down. Let's delete this face real quick because it's going through the object. Let's press it. X and delete the face. Uh, we'll take these two and press F and combine them together. We don't need the bottom face for now. We don't need that interior vertice. We'll get rid of those. All right, so you getting the idea of a staircase now? This is kind of makes sense, hopefully. Um, this will work. 
basically is what we're getting at. Now, the way we start this one, of course, when you go up a floor, you can see it's going to be a little bit different, potentially. Go back to absolute grid snap. Um, so we're going to have to think about those kinds of things as we're creating stuff like this. Like this wouldn't work here, obviously. Um, so a lot of times stairs are hollow underneath or very thin anyways. Uh, so things like that, you can potentially, I'm going to try it. We'll see if it works. Uh, you can try just doing a solidify on it real quick. Shift Q here with hard ops or use this little five modifier normally. Might be able to get this to work. Forward slash, we're going to isolate it because there's some weird things going on in here that we don't necessarily need, like these ones. Delete those edges, delete that vertex. Don't necessarily need these over here either. You know, like a lot of doubles and stuff going on, I think. It's weird stuff. Okay, so we could solidify even thickness, perhaps. Really up to you. Um, but we'll give it like a 0.2, I think, meters forward slash again. And now we have a staircase. So it's not pretty, but it's a, it's a staircase deck. Anyway. So you'll go back through this at some point and do a detailed model with every, well, you'll do like one step and then you can duplicate them up or whatever, create a floor tile in here, or even use this floor tile and just make it part of it. You know, that's optional, but it's up to you on how you're going to work these things out. Because at some point, this floor tile will be up here on the second floor, and you can see these match up quite well now. It's not really a big deal. Um, you can see this doesn't work with the column here, so you'd have to cut a special column piece probably in this area if you absolutely had to have it like that, or you run it up, right, and continue it through it. This one just looks goofy like that, so. That's pretty much what's going to happen with stairs anyways. Just so this doesn't look as ridiculous, we're going to add a cube to it. Um, like a little mini support structure, I guess, real quick. We're not going to make this real special-like or anything. All right. This could also cause problems when you start trying to go up with it. So maybe we'll rotate it. 90 degrees. We'll make it like a column here in the back, basically. Cut it down the middle, delete the back side, fill this area. And so we can drag this one up to where it needs to go. Okay. This one stays with the walls, not with the floors. This one stays with the floors, right? For some reason, this is way below. Oh, it's because we solidified it. Um, you might have to apply the solidify sometimes. This one we're going to eyeball right to this point here. Our whole control and shift actually looks like it gets it right. Okay, and the same could be said for this one up here. Control and shift might work. I might have to eyeball this one. Eventually we can snap that to a um, another modular piece or floor tile or whatever. You can snap them together at some point. So let's just join these. We got stairs 01A now, apply rotations and scales, make sure the grid point is where you want it. And now we can go ahead and copy the name. And export that out into the scene. Bam. Yeah, no textures yet, right? Because that's it's really um, something you should probably do later on. But start getting it worked and start understanding how this is all going to work together anyways, as opposed to panicking when you got too many names and too much stuff and performance starts to uh, hurt really bad uh, your game models they might be more demanding than these things but they're not much more demanding usually so if you run out of performance with these shapes you're more than likely um, gonna hurt when it comes to setting up a whole level right so we're just gonna lay this out a little bit more here Okay, you can see what's going on now. So this could be like a little stairwell, basically. And this would be like the bottom floor, possibly. Um, but if we were to go up with this thing now, you see, that's our next stair section. So we would need another... Um, you can see the floors don't actually line up with it because I didn't push this to the wall. 
back here. It needs to go all the way back like that. I think. Yeah. It needs to sit on top of this tile. And so this one will come up at some point. It'll be right there. Okay. We had a ceiling section somewhere. Pull that up. We need to line that to all axes real quick. There you go. You see that roof's coming in. It's a little bit narrower now. All right, wait. You're getting the idea now, hopefully. We're just going to lay these out manually. We could always create prefabs of sections as well of an environment. So if this whole section we wanted to... Oh, you know what? We did not start at the right area on that one, did we? I'm going to move that over. See what happens. Yeah, that column would be in the, the middle of that. So this would go over. This would go over. We need one more wall unit is what we need. So sometimes you got to do a little like uh, trial and error. Get, get used to that. It's going to happen. Figure out what you can put where and how. And all that fun stuff. Because these all had to move over. This whole section has to move over because of that. So do all of these. All right. Okay, so this would be like your second floor area. And I really want all these walls over here as well. But unfortunately, the way I have this configured, I can't mirror these really. So we're just gonna have to manually move them real quick. We do another column in here if we wanted. This is very repetitious. It will, people will notice this, okay? Just keep that in mind. You have to break this kind of repetition up later on by using either unique pieces or um, adding different types of columns or textures or something. You got to break it up somehow. I'm just trying to get a little section laid out here for you guys so you can kind of see how that's going. Just back. Here. Yeah. Let's just do all the walls first, real quick. Stop focusing on that column for a second. We'll make another pass. And so, set dressing in general, you're not, when you're doing environment art, usually you're not the only person working with that environment stuff. Um, I don't know why I didn't see it rotate. What was the value? Do, yeah. A little bit off, huh? 180, hold control. It did it right on the money here, but it is off slightly. It should be 270. That's weird. Usually you got to hold control before you start rotating it, or you'll get off numbers. In this case, I still did that, and it didn't give me off numbers. All right, so you can see how it met back up with itself. So you got to remember that modular kits in general, usually they like to loop around. Um, these ones also happen to work vertically, so they're a little bit more challenging. But a lot of times they only work in one direction, just so you know. And then they cover it up, or like the environment artists will cover it up with the um, extra little assets and stuff, so props or whatever. Anything where uh, things don't quite look right, that will happen. So you can see I can knock in a... Ceiling section, here's a floor section, done, right? So this whole area is starting to become enclosed, which is nice. Not all of these will be set up still correctly. Let's generate all their colliders. Uh, they should all have the materials fixed, except for the stairs, maybe. All in the column, I guess. Yeah, for that one. All right. So here, let's press the play button now. You can see we're in our environment. These will start to get really heavy um, unless you can call them out visually. Um, so you have to use um, um, camera calling or whatever. But you can see we have stairs now, technically. It doesn't look like much, but it's a thing. So 
if we wanted to create a three or four story building, we could just do every floor like this, I guess, if we wanted to. Um, to me, that would get really boring really quickly. So we could create a bunch of prefabs out of these different components if we wanted it as well. That could be useful. Um, however, in this case, I think I'm just going to uh, duplicate this one up, put it up here, duplicate this over. There we go. We got that set up. So I could just grab all of these walls for the most part and columns. Duplicate those up. Bam, just like that. I guess I didn't grab those ones, so let's do that. All right. So now you're getting the idea of how this is going to work out. So this whole floor section, pull it in this way. You can see it meets up at the center of the grid. Cool. Take this section and rotate, hold control, and then rotate. And you can see it still got off for some reason. So now you're going to. Oh, you know what? Let's um I just realized something. Hold on. This should have went the other way, I think. It should be back at zero is what it should be, I think. And then it's been at one eighty. Negative one eighty, I guess. All right. You see that one worked. Okay, so duplicate, rotate, hold control, 270. There you go. I don't know why it's being such a pain. We're gonna rotate, hold control. There we go. So this is about as easy as they come as far as kits go. Now, like I was saying, you would use custom unique one-off pieces. We'll create some other stuff here real quick, but I'll just lay this little section out because I'm just giving you an idea of how it could potentially work out, right? I'm not saying you have to do things this way, guys. Make it modular kits however works best in any given situation. But you can see we made a room up here at the top, right? So we start at the bottom. Maybe we got to go find the evil villain bad guy in the top floor in his apartment or something. And kick in the door. Okay. All right. Maybe this is something like um, uh, a balcony. It's not necessarily um, enclosed or something. So you can always create other things to add to this later on. But you need to you need to settle your floors, walls, stairwells. Uh, I think are the priority really, uh, because once you do that, you can take other elements. Like I'll take this one here. Uh, we'll just do one of these actually. Let's separate that as a new object. So I'm using machine tools to do that. But Shift E, duplicate the face, P, separate selection, select the new, the new piece here. Um, I'm going to actually place the origin point here, right in the back corner. Apply rotation and scale real quick. So you can think of this as like that, um, maybe that balcony section. Perhaps we're going to extrude out from it. Uh, we could overlay it on top of this a little bit as well if we wanted to. Um, so we can do things like that. This is where drop-in characters come in handy. You can actually export um, that character we're using there, the third-person template. I think this one's different. No, it's the same one. Um, you can open up the geo on a character. You see there's models, geo, right here. Uh, you can go ahead and take this. Oh, you can't export it, my bad. There's an add-on, or there's a plugin for Unity where you can export things. But if you just uh, right-click Show and Explorer, you can find the Armature FBX file. That's all you got to do. So right-click Show and Explorer, right? All right, let's go back to uh, Models. And we're going to make the second floor open, open over here. So we're going to do those up like that. All right, and so this is going to be 50 centimeters. Let's go back to Blender real quick, finish this thing out. So uh, we got our little bit of a rise here to it, which is fine, but I need to go down at least 40 centimeters. But I'm going to do 50 like that. Uh, I'm going to pull all of that out just a bit, maybe. I don't know. It looks kind of weird if I do that. Let's just do this. Let's chamfer these edges real quick. I want to pull these ones in a little bit. 
this is kind of a weird thing you can do, but you can you can do this. Okay. We know it's going to be used right here in this area, so we'll get away with it. And um, up here at the top, we're going to do a cube. Oop. Sometimes you need to place the 3D cursor here. It's helpful. So select the face, shift S, do um, cursor to uh, face. Now we can create a cube here. It'll be, whoop, won't be so hard to manage, right? And just scale it in. We'll loop cut it. Delete the bottom vertices. Uh, we can S, shift Z, scale it in some more. Uh, so we can make a handrail system. So I do a lot of Googling around and finding different little resources. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, between here and here, that's uh, at the bottom here, right? So between here and here, it's 0.9 meters. Uh, we go up one more. That's one meter. Uh, Cyberpunk supposedly used 1.1 uh, uh, meters for handrails. So that's what we'd be looking for right there. I don't know if that's entirely accurate. I think that looks fine, but I don't know. You, you can use whatever you want technically, but I did find that little tidbit of information interesting. So uh, we can go ahead and maybe like lay this out here and duplicate it and put it um, maybe every so often like that. Hit Shift R real quick. Okay, so this last one we don't need. Okay, we're actually doing kind of like this weird offset like this. You'll see why in a second here, but um, we're going to do another cube, scale it, pull it up here real quick. I'm going to go into edit mode and pull it out to there and then pull it out to there. Okay, so now we can make like the little top part of the handrail. Very simple, right? So this is like an addition to your model, like or to your kit. Like we know the floor is dead in into empty space uh, potentially. So this is like a little capper for those areas. Handrail, the way real handrail kind of is, anyways. I'm gonna join all these meshes by selecting this one last. Control J, shade auto smooth maybe. And we can see that's a pretty maybe a pretty high handrail. I don't know if I like that necessarily, but. We can work with this kind of stuff. You know, we can add a little segment here, extrude it up. We don't have to get too bogged down in detail just yet. Um, you can make variations of rails, obviously, and do all kinds of fun stuff with that. Um, but the way this one's working out at the current, uh, the current setup, anyways, that's just going to be placed over here. You can also add other more encompassing features. So, like, uh, we know there's going to be a, a a ceiling tile up here, right? So we can just throw it up there real quick just to look at it. So we could try doing other things like maybe uh, taking this whole segment. It should be starting, yeah, in the center. So you try extruding that in and maybe doing something like that. Uh, you can get really wild with it if you wanted to. Maybe do like two loop cuts and then try doing a little piece out like that. See, and now you can start really building up your ideas because this might only work in this one stairwell. And so you can do something like that. You can make this as its own little modular piece and then not not even think about doing it this way. You could also do like, um, you could like separate it into its own segment. And it might start over here and this might be like a support beam underneath, right? So you can do things like that. That's when you're going to start getting all those real good sci-fi feels to all your different levels. Because you can do things like this. Inset individual. Right. we got to do these one at a time, unfortunately, but we're going to control E, bridge edge loops. And technically, we don't even have to do all that, probably. Oh, yeah, we do. Just because we only divided it down the middle here uh, twice, that makes this at like 33%, 66%. You have to go back out to a full modular piece, like a full unit, to get it back onto the grid. If you try to repetitiously lay these out modularly, it won't work. They're, they're the wrong kind of scale, or the wrong, they're, I forgot what you call it, but they're basically, you can't do it. It's going to have little slight uh, numerical di differences until it drives you mad. Um, and they'll come off the grid and they'll cause problems, basically, is what I'm getting at. You see how we can make another little segment here? So we'll just call that floor support 01A. We'll call this um, 
railing the 01A. I don't know. You can name it whatever you want. You can see where it's going though. So we're going to export the railing. You can see why doing this only in Blender for a little bit of while before you start exporting could be useful because you might not know the names you need. And then you'll just get bogged down. And also when I exported these as well, the origin points were all over the place and I didn't have the right scales probably. So I'm going to apply rotations and scales and um, they're still facing in the direction I want them to, but the origin points need to go um, somewhere predictable at least. Um, in this particular case, I think this piece, I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to press control period, move the uh, origin point real quick. I'm going to rotate it um, like this. Okay, just to get it prepped in the right area. I'm going to apply rotation and scale on it. Hit control period. I'm going to actually vertex snap this real quick right there. Okay, control period again. So I can move it back to the grid. Absolute grid snap. And I want to make sure it's just lined up correctly everywhere. Okay, so that, that's fine. We can apply rotation scale to this. We can re-export this one real quick. Copy the name again. Support O1A. And then this one can be... This one should have a good origin point on it, actually. This particular case, this is kind of like a unique one-off piece. Like, we know we want to put it in this position every time in relationship to these floors, possibly. So this one's okay. The origin point's not a big deal. We just want to make sure that it was um, applied rotation and scale. So we'll go back to Unity now. Those um, pieces should have came in. And we got to just get rid of the materials real quick. Now all we have to do is um, give them some collision, generate colliders. Normally, you can set up your collider or your collisions in um, Unity, or excuse me, in Blender, and you can export them out, okay? But um, we're not doing all that in this video, unfortunately. But you can see we can drag and drop this out. We can snap it to the grid, all axes, and when we push it around on the one meter grid now, uh, the sun's, I want to kind of rotate the sun so we can see it better. Where's, where is it? Right at the top. Oh, directional light. There it was. I just saw it. Let's rotate that thing around this way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you can see the same process taking place, right? You can also do that fancy little um, mirror trick that we utilize down here. You can do that on things like this as well. It's a little bit harder to do, but a lot of times you can get away with it. Okay. So... There's also a really good um, utility for Unity in, in particular. I think Unreal Engine has one too. It just lets you do like a raise instead of have to place this manually. Uh, and it does a couple other extra things like that. But you can see if we try to use one of these in the corner here, it's just it's not saying it won't work, but it's just going to be a little squirrely usually. Like you might have to create little end caps for it uh, potentially. Sometimes they don't work. Sometimes they will. But sometimes you got to add that little end cap to it. And we'll rotate this one first. And we'll move it. All right. And instantly you can see what's happening here. It's creating a little um, extra lip there, a little ledge of sorts. All right. I think it stops in there, yeah. yeah. Right. We'll have to do some custom finagling here for this section. More than likely, the stairs will have to be kind of built to fit into this area as opposed to not uh, being like completely modular and free, perhaps. Um, which could be, might be what you want to do anyways. You could still try to intersect things, but it might not work out, just so you know. Um, all right, and then that's the floor, the support piece, right? You see how I, I set it up this way so it comes in predictably, so we can rotate it in here. Probably got to align it to the axis. Let's switch to pivot. Okay. 
all axes. I guess when you're in rotation, it doesn't let you do that. Okay. It's good to know for later. All right. You see how far that comes forward, but it still doesn't come through this section. All right. So we can run things like this around inside of here later on, potentially. But remember, when you're creating any kind of um, environmental piece, right, or you're creating lots of different models like this, eventually what ends up happening, oh, that's right in the wall. Oops. <laughs> Can't even select it. It's so far buried in there. Oh, I can't. Never mind. Let's pull them down a little bit for now. Didn't I have another one back there? Maybe I didn't. When you're creating anything like this, just remember it's mesh times materials times lights is usually what ends up creating your draw calls. Um, sometimes they get batched together. That's okay. But a lot of times it's mesh times lights times materials. Right? So you'll have to probably build out specific ceiling tiles with this geo already in it. So you don't have more mesh than needed because this is going to be an extra draw, extra draw, extra draw, extra draw. So you might do like a whole patch like this. But these modular pieces, when you know, you're in Blender, you build them, right? The little granular pieces. You can combine them together later on because we don't need these faces in between these two, right? In the middle there. So we can combine these later on into a big solid piece and uh, potentially use that and set up collisions on it and all that fun stuff. But you can see where this little process goes. It's not short necessarily. It's it's really kind of fast in a way, but um, the first time you're doing it, you're definitely going to get stumped time and time again. It's one of those things you just have to do a few times over um, really to get kind of in the mindset of like what, what can be modular, what can't be. And it'll make you a better modeler because of it. Like you'll honestly, you'll end up at this point where um, you just won't have so many problems with uh, identifying repetition in the 3D models you're making. And then you can make better use of arrays and things like that. And you can see here how this is like right here. This will Z fight a little bit, I think, in that area. This is the fun stuff about kits, really. Uh, sometimes you just don't get them right. Sometimes they're a little bit off, but you can finagle them. With each other and so if i just wanted to you, you can see that's in line here at the top let's just pull it up um with an active element and we'll pull it up one like that okay this is uh railing a so we're going to export railing a save the scene go back to unity and there you go no more z fighting on that particular piece so if this column was exposed here at the top this is, you know, you would need a UV map that appropriately, but um, it wouldn't be such a big deal. Like, if your character never comes up here, then it's not really a big deal. You maybe get away with this, but you might also want to create like little trims specifically for buildings as well and lay them over on top of that, even. It just goes and goes around and around. Like, you can make so many variations of the same things over and over and over again. Um, like these little guys here, even though we made them for. Um, doing around with that floor tile, we might even be able to get away with using some of these on staircases and stuff. Like it's just, it's really wild what you can do sometimes. So maybe if we separated this into two different pieces, like a bottom piece, a top piece, you can see we might be able to get away with using these on part of the staircase at least. All right. And now you'll have to create a custom slanted one that goes down with the. Um, stairs themselves potentially right could you run that all the way down though i don't know it depends it depends on what your what kind of aesthetics are acceptable to you i guess um would that fill that hole there no so you're going to need a custom corner piece to kind of fill in here maybe a t-section here if you wanted these rails to just be all kinds of wacky uh, you could do that um, there's probably a better way to lay this whole section out that's more realistic and um like maybe this stair comes all the way over and then it has like a little kind of like a suicide prevention rally around it so people don't jump off the stairwell area or something. I don't know. You could do that all the way across all of this as well, technically. So that could give you a real kind of just dystopian kind of um, view anyways. So, or feel for the environment. So 
think about different types of railings, different types of stairs. You you can see though it's all starting to work out now, right? Like it's really not that bad. You got stairs now. Instead of them being ramps, you'll put the little actual steps in there so that they work all the way up at the same rate. Um, you use an array, basically. You model it out, you use an array, and then you finesse it into position. Um, and you do that as well, right? But this will be your stair section. Now you can create pots, planters, uh, more walls. You can create doorways, whatever, uh, windows. You can see here, our character has plenty of room to get through here. Jumps into the door a little bit. But out here, it doesn't hit the ceiling. That's nice. All right, so if you have like Super Mario Brothers level jumping, just might want to make the ceilings a little higher, perhaps. Or lower, who knows? It's up to you there. This has no like real foundational structure other than that one section there so kind of kind of could work i think it needs to go out to the walls though personally that's probably where the stairs actually mount is on the, the side of the wall right this would be kind of like a bad engineering it or something so do you think about believability at least not necessarily you don't have to be super realistic on everything but if it doesn't look right there's a good odd chance um that's not believable. That's probably worse than uh, probably worse than making something that's like actually possible to be, like actually be built. You know what I'm saying? Like you could actually build the thing out, and it still has problems and you got issues, right? This one, um, remember that little increment I was talking about earlier? I think I showed it in this right here at the base. It ran all the way flush. Um, but I wanted it to have a little step up before it did that. You see? Um, let's export these stairs again. So that'll run flush now. Right here. Look. So it perfectly lines up with this floor tile now. And uh, there you go. You're well on your way to building a whole building, a whole environment. Um, like I'm saying, though, definitely think about creating larger units. If you can get away with something like this, do it. Um, absolutely. Because at some point, you know, you might end up doing like the whole side of a building that's really large, right? And you just simply can't lay out individual components like this all over because this will kill your performance. This is a, this is not necessarily the correct way of doing things every time. Okay, sometimes you got to make what like a big single unit. That's all. That's all I'm getting at. Okay, especially if you have like a seamless texture, you can go ahead and toss seamless textures on things like that. These things work better with trims. Um, big wall units work better with seamless columns. Might be good with seamless, but you can also use trims. Uh, it just really depends. And so I don't really go over the UV mapping side of things because uh, if you're it, it, in any given situation, things might change on you, and it's really hard to explain the UV mapping part. But basically, like you got um, a four meter wall that's with a seamless texture, that's fine. But you have baseboards on it, you could use a trim sheet too. So you don't have to use just one material; you can use two materials. If you're if you're using bigger sections as well, like you're doing whole buildings that you want as just one solid mesh, maybe you build them originally as modular pieces. Um, but then you kind of optimize it. You delete all the interior faces, the back faces. Maybe you don't see nothing on the back side of the building, so you delete all that or whatever. Um, those can have like five materials on them. No problem. Five or six. Um, just depends. I mean, the, if you look at examples, go to um, go to any marketplace where you can find modular kits and look at how they're made. Just look at how many materials they're using, how they're arranged. Um, you can check maybe like some of their performance if you want to. See which ones perform better, but generally speaking, this will get you off to a good start at least. The whole modular series that was the idea because you can't really find too many videos on YouTube just talking about like laying and arranging things like this out. Um, but this is this is the base right here, man. This is it. Uh, as soon as you understand these basic kind of blocky shapes, you can build anything you want. You want really tall windows, you can make a really tall window section, right? You want really 
uh, you want like an arch or like a church or, or something like you need a bunch of like arches and stuff you can build those and all you're going to do is put them into the footprint of where they exist right it's all about that footprint so i'm not going to build a whole arch here but you'll get the idea here in a sec um, if this was down on the ground level and i just pull these things out you can make modular kits that are literally this tall um, the thing is is that there's a good odd chance the pieces inside of it would also be potentially modular so um, you can do things like this and you do all kinds of stuff with it really maybe bevel these vertices control oop, control b and v hit c to clamp it mouse will up a m merge by distance press e extrude it push it back through gotta scale it out a little bit more there you go I'll duplicate it rotate it 90 Oop. we don't have it center aligned whoops that's all right uh, we'll just do the one then uh, we'll just do a boolean go into edit mode 50 duplicate right uh, or press r rotate hold control rotate 90 degrees uh, we're going to make these do like so. I think we have to use exact. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they broke it entirely. So let's go ahead and grab this one by pressing L if we can get a hold of it. And edit. Okay. And then P separate selection. We'll do another boolean. There you go. So you see where that's going? How fast that could be? This could be done with a trim sheet or maybe even a seamless texture, right? A lot of shaded auto smooth. We'll call it a tower. Shade auto smooth, apply, shade auto smooth. There you go. Copy the name. You have to figure out all these components, guys. They can be big. They don't have to be just little panels, like walls and stuff like that. They can be smaller than this as well. But you can see, we got the tower in here now. And um, maybe there's like a... Just a little segment of these things coming out on top of the uh, support structure here, right? I think I placed the uh, origin point in the center, which may or may not be ideal, but you'll think about all that as you're creating, right? So maybe it's like some kind of big church thing, right? You gotta get up there. Well, we gotta go find the. Uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame or whatever, right? He's up here. Look. Big big pieces fill a lot of space really quickly, and it makes it really interesting real quick as well. Um, but when you're doing, like, interiors, these kinds of little smaller things usually work out better. Um, exteriors like bigger things, generally speaking. Some materials are also very large, so you can use large pieces in those, right? Overall, all off the world, of course. And that's it for this video, though. I hope you enjoyed watching this one. I will have to check you guys out in the next one, all right? Take care. I'll see you in the next one.